Swinging on the High Wire, August 2nd, 2021. For whatever reason, as I mentioned earlier, the karma I came into this world with expresses largely through intimate relationships. Since I was very young, I would fall into the same patterns over and over again with men. These patterns were not loving, but founded in deep wounding and fear. Almost a year ago, I left that all behind. Back then, I was in a relationship with a man and immediately the old pattern reasserted itself. I began receding into myself. I forgot my dreams. I forgot my strength. I was working with a shaman at the time, a wise woman. She looked into me and saw that I was frozen in the snow, my eyes wide and open and encrusted with ice. Lovingly, she opened me just enough to let life force begin to melt the ice and regain its hold in my body. I saw that I was in a dangerous place, and I left. I shattered then. I cannot explain this shattering except to say that it was the final heartbreak in a lifetime of heartbreak that finally brought me to my knees. This wise woman helped me see that my life was a holographic field depicting an exact projection of my own inner state. These men, then, were not outside of me, but walking, talking, physical reflections of my own inner masculine essence. I could not blame them for coming into my life. They were simply reflections of my own wounded self. Shuddering, I packed thing after thing into bags to give away. I understood dimly that my healing must start with me. I would have to heal my own inner masculine before I could ever hope to call in the love of my life. Somehow, I knew I would need to be alone to do this. This wound ran so deep, generations of it flowing through my blood, that I knew instinctively it would take a massive clearing to call in the brilliant and sacred masculine that somehow I just knew walked this earth. That's when I left. I shed the trappings of my life, got on a plane, and went. I went to the jungles of Puerto Rico to be alone, to heal, and to write. I didn't know how I would survive. I didn't know how I would live. All I knew was that it was time to go. One morning, soon after arriving in the jungles, I sat in the mellow sunshine, watching the wind move through the vibrant green leaves of the valley below my window. I had just finished crying, a long, deep expression of grief that left me cleansed and quiet. I realized in that porous moment of quiet surrender that it was time to stop trying to find the perfect man out there and develop him instead within me. I began immediately. I believed that no incarnated man in my life, no matter how much I loved them, had had the capacity to show me in word, deed, energy, and essence, the true nature of the healed and sacred masculine. So I turned toward the one man I knew I could trust, Archangel Michael. There, isolated in quarantine, in the lush feminine surroundings of a Puerto Rican jungle, and shattered from a parting that was still very fresh, I asked Archangel Michael to work with me. I asked him to show me in my body, mind, and heart the way it truly feels to be in the presence of the unwavering sacred masculine. He began immediately, as the masculine does. Over the next few months, I adjusted to his presence in my life, he would speak to me, both on the inner planes and through people I met. He came to me in dreams. Slowly, slowly, he began to let me feel in my body what it was like to be spoken to, to be held, and to be guided from a place of pure love and empowerment. Slowly, slowly, I began to accept nothing less, both from myself and from those around me. I always recognized his voice, his words, because they were unfailingly simple, kind, direct, empowering, and true. I understood that if I asked him for something, he would bring it, or he would let me know why he could not. If I asked him to be with me, he would be there. He never made promises he couldn't keep. He never minced words, but somehow his honesty was always empowering, always loving, always galvanizing and never judgmental, critical, or angry. When I felt unlovely, frustrated, petty, irritated, ugly, I would ask, Michael, can you love me like this? 
never believing he could. But his answer always came back without hesitation. Yes, of course. When I lay down at night, I would ask him to hold me. Right away, I would feel his wings come around me. My body felt them, and I would relax into sleep, more loved than I had ever been. Archangel Michael has taught me over these past few months what it means to be cherished by the sacred masculine. I introduce him now because I want to capture a dream that he brought me the other night. Before falling asleep, I asked my angels for help relinquishing doubt. And by this, I meant all doubt, self-doubt, doubt of my divine nature, doubt that I mean guided moment to moment by the infinitely loving, creative, and playful intelligence of my higher self. Doubt is exhausting, and I want to be done with it. That night, I had a dream. In the dream, I was simultaneously inhabiting my body and watching it from an outside consciousness. From this vantage point, I began climbing a towering metal ladder. Up, up, up I climbed, my body becoming a tiny speck. Below me was a vast crowd of people, silent, eyes riveted on me. Hundreds of feet above this crowd, I reached a thin crossbeam. Unhesitatingly, I crawled out from the ladder and onto it. In the middle of this crossbeam was a set of handles. Suspended hundreds of feet in the air, I crawled across the beam until I reached the handles. And then, gripping them, I let myself down and dangled there. There was no safety net. There was nothing below me but a massive crowd, their necks craned upward as they watched. Then, fully inhabiting my body now with my dream consciousness, I began to swing. I swung my body smoothly and vigorously, letting my hands come off the handles and then landing back to grip them again. Far above the crowd, I performed a series of gymnastic moves that even in my dream I knew I had never tried before. After some time, my awareness receded down to the ground, and I beheld my body from far, far below, even as I retained the exhilaration of this acrobatic dance with death. Suddenly, my awareness receded again, and I was watching this entire spectacle on a TV screen. An announcer came into view. She was holding a microphone, and she said, while looking straight into the camera, There can be no question. Here is a woman who has absolutely no doubt. I woke up laughing. I knew that Archangel Michael had brought me this dream. It is his reminder of who I truly am, the one that he sees. That, even in the moments I think I have doubt, there is a part of me that is as certain, as fearless, and as daring as the woman swinging on the high wire. <laughs>